Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you, I believe it's my third attempt at painting a Raptodon for the new Seraphon. It's becoming a bit of a theme here on this channel, me painting uh, different color schemes for on the same kind of models uh, over and over, but uh, it's actually kind of fun. So I'm starting off with a model that's been primed using white scars and then I use a a contrast paint called Sigwald Burgundy for the body and another contrast paint and this one is Pterodon Turquoise and I use that on the feathers on the head and also on the tail. Then once everything has had its first coat of contrast paint I go over it with a white dry brushing and my intention is to do a sort of um, you might call it slap chop plus <laughs> style of painting um, where I first use a darker color uh, underneath and then do a dry brushing of white and then put another layer of contrast paint over top taking full advantage of the highlights and shadows that the first layer of contrast and highlights with dry brushing has given me. Then I grab another contrast paint. This one is called Magma Droth Flame and it's one of the newer contrast paints and I believe it's sort of a single pigment thing which means that it does not do the usual contrast thing as much where it gives you like nice shadows and highlights on its own. Uh, however, this has the very big benefit in my book at least of being a very nice vivid um, orange so I am more than willing to uh, sort of work a little bit uh, more to get, get the highlights and the shadows that I want afterwards. Then for the smaller feathers on the neck and also on the body I use a contrast paint called Warp Lightning which is a nice quite a vibrant green um, uh, one of my favorite contrast paints. I also use it all the time, for instance, as the base color of skin for my orcs and stuff. It's just, uh, it's one of those colors I keep coming back to. Then for the bigger feathers on top of its head, I use a, another contrast paint. This one is called Lokshan Purple, which is a really nice purple color. It looks a little bit too blue here on camera, but it is actually a really nice purple. Then once everything has been painted a second time, I do another layer of dry brushing, just again using a uh, pure white. This is uh, the army painter's matte white, I believe. Um, again, I want to see if I could do a sort of slap chop plush, which means here I'm using two steps, uh, two steps of uh, undercoating and dry brushing, um, just to see if I can get a really nice effect of shadow and highlights. And then my idea was to use a yellow contrast paint. This one is called Imperial Fist, which is also one of those single pigment colors. And I had thought that it would be sort of a nice highlight for the orange, but it turned out that it was just way too yellow. Uh, I didn't like it. I wanted the model to be orange with yellow highlights, not just more or less pure uh, pure uh, yellow. So I ended up doing a wet blend using a mixture of the Imperial Fist and the Magma Droth, Magma Droth Flame that I had used originally. And I really like the combination of these two colors together. I thought they were really nice, vibrant, warm uh, and worked just worked really well. Then I grabbed a, another contrast paint. This one is called Scorpion Green, which is sort of an almost neon-like uh, green uh, contrast paint. And I use that on the uh, smaller feathers, again, on the neck and the body of the dino birdie thing, whatever it is. I quite like it. I think it's quite sweet. Then for the feathers uh, on top of the head, I go over them using Volopus Pink, uh, also a contrast paint. And... Um, I think it ended up really covering the purple bits quite a lot. I don't think you really see that there is a purple on the zone, but still it gives a little bit of depth uh, that I really like. Then for the orange, I decided that uh, even though the sort of slap chop two step thing worked really well, I wanted just a little bit more definition, especially to the highlights. So I did a quick wash using a combination of two uh, fluorescent paints from Huge Miniatures. One is called um, Laser Orange and the other one is called Starfire Yellow, which is uh, both of them like really nice, vibrant, fluorescent um, colors. And I just did, as you can see, a pretty quick wash I, um, or a glaze. Uh, I didn't want to spend hours and hours doing this because I want this to be the color scheme that I can use on like the entire uh, unit of these guys. I want at least five but probably ten on my uh, in my army and so I want something that is uh, that looks good but is still you know achievable in a reasonable amount of time. 
Then as a highlight for the small green feathers, I use a, used a color called uh, Quantum Green, also a fluorescent paint from uh, Huge Miniatures. I just really like these paints, so of course that is also a, one of those that I use to highlight the bigger feathers. Uh, first one, I use one that is called Pulse Wave Pink. Uh, as you can see here, I use it as a sort of a nice edge highlight. And uh, then I also use it to add a little bit of uh, definition to make it look a little bit more like feathers, as you can see here. Then for the second layer of highlight, I use another uh, paint from Huge Miniatures, and this one is called Cyber Pink, which is just a little bit more of a lighter pink, but still really vibrant and not, uh, not, not pastel at all. It looks a little bit pastel perhaps here on this video, but in real life it's really not. Then for the sort of strands between the feathers, I used a color from Vallejo. It's a game color called um, Magic Blue, uh, which is just a nice sort of more or less blue blue color. <laughs> um, and uh, and then I it, and it just work, works really well with a lot of colors. It's just sort of a basic nice deep rich blue. And I highlighted that with a color called Turquoise Oxide from Green Stuff World. It's actually supposed to be like an effect color, but I think it works really well uh, as an ordinary color for highlighting blue. And uh, then lastly, I just hit it with a touch of uh, white mixed with the Turquoise Oxide as sort of a very, uh, very light uh, blue color on the tip of the strands. And then I did a pure white highlight on each of the feathers as well just at the very tip of, uh, of the birdie. Then uh, for the rider, I'm afraid the camera is out of focus here, but I try to use more or less the same uh, steps here. So I start off with uh, a contrast paint. This one is called Croxtical Scales, and I just paint the entire model more or less with that, and then go over it with a dry brush. Um, for this, I'm using a little bit of a simpler method, just because the ride, I mean, the ride is smaller and I don't want to spend too much time painting it, uh, because I have a lot of skinks in my army. So after the dry brushing step is done, I go over it with some Athematic Blue, um, because this is just a lovely, nice uh, color that I always go to if I have a chance to use it. Then I grab some Talasa Blue and use that for the scales. If any of you have seen the video I did yesterday about uh, of painting a, um, a Star Wars warrior, uh, this is more or less the same steps, uh, but with a little some slight variations, but more or less the same steps as in that video. Then for his uh, crest here on his head, I use a pink color, and this one is called burgundy. And then for the armor plate on his leg, I use another contrast paint. This one is called Blood Angels Red. And after that's dry, I do a outline using Black Legion, also a contrast paint. You can use any black paint you want. It's just that a uh, the black contrast paint is a little bit uh, smoother and easier to work with than a thinned down version of Abaddon Black, for instance. Then I grab another fluorescent paint from uh, Huge Miniatures, and this one is called Radar Red. And I use that to do an edge highlight around, um, well, sort of marking out two different small designs on the armor plate, just to make sure that he fits in with uh, the designs also on the newer Star Wars Warriors. Then I highlight that using uh, another fluorescent paint, and this one is called a Laser Orange. And lastly, I just touch it with a little drop of the Starfire Yellow that I also used on the... Um, used on the skin on the uh, on the birdie thing. Then for the scales in the back, I paint them in using a mood green, which is a color from Citadel. And I just try to be a little bit careful here. I don't want to mess up the lines between the scales just because then I have to go back and fix it. So if I can help it, I am a lazy painter and I don't want to redo things. I don't really have to. I then use uh, the Quantum Green again from Huge Miniatures to do an edge highlight of each of the scales. I want them to be really nice and bright and sort of really pop when you look at them. And while I'm painting these scales, I would just like to mention that I have just today launched a Patreon page for the Dyson Demons uh, YouTube channel. And if you somehow find the videos entertaining or useful or inspirational, uh, perhaps you would like to consider supporting me over there. I would really appreciate it. Well, uh, back to painting. So I highlight the last uh, bit of the scales using the Starfire Yellow, the one I also use to highlight the armor plates and also the birdie. Uh, just a slight touch at the tip of each scale, just to really make them pop. 
unfortunately a little bit out of focus there, but I guess I, I hope you still get the idea. Then I decided that the skin on the skink was just a tiny bit too um, uniform. There wasn't enough visual, visual interest. So I went back over some of the raised areas with a little bit of a white mixed with a touch of the athermatic blue. So a very light, very, very light blue color. Just a, just a tiny bit and just real quick. I, again, this is something I want to do for an entire army, so not something I want to spend hours and hours and hours on. It's not a competition piece. I then highlight the strands in, on the crest first using the oxide uh, color from Green Stuff World and then a slight uh, touch of uh, light blue just like I did on the birdie. Then for the crest here I use the same colors I used on the feathers on the bird. So first the pulse wave pink for the first layer of highlights. And then the cyberpunk pink, I'm always going to say cyberpunk, but cyber pink uh, for the second layer of highlights. And then lastly, just a touch of white, just to really make the highlights pop. And it's done. I was uh, quite excited to see how it would look with the rider and everything, especially in orange. I haven't painted a lot of models like orange as the main color before, but I quite like it. Here you can see it next to my uh, second attempt at the Raptodon, which is... Uh, uh, done more or less purely with uh, the slap chop method, so no, I don't, almost no or no no uh, highlights done by hand at all. Um, and then you can see my first version, which is sort of the, um, it's sort of the premium version. It's the one that took me by far the most time, and you can see it has smoother highlights and just everything has been painted to well a higher standard, I guess. But it also took me way longer. I do like the one on the left better. I think it looks. I I, I just think it looks better. Uh, but for the time invested, I actually think the orange one is completely serviceable as well. And I do definitely like that better than the green slap chop version. So I think um, I think it's actually mission accomplished. I found I found a way to paint it like at a quite a high level uh, with the first green one, a very quick one with the second uh, slap chop one, and then sort of a nice in between with the orange. So uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with it. And I think it uh, it's a really cool model to paint. I really like it. And uh, yeah, here you can see it on a photo, a little bit more of a close up look. And it was just a, such a fun model. I liked it. And uh, I, uh, I'm quite happy with the orange. As I said, I didn't really know if I would like it or not because I don't usually paint a lot of stuff orange. But I think uh, perhaps that has been a mistake. Orange is the way to go. And here, of course, you can see it under a UV light. And that is the joy of painting with fluorescent paints. They look like this under a UV light, which has no practical value whatsoever. But I happen to think that it's very fun and very cool. And I look forward to taking this photo every time I paint with these paints. So yeah, um, again, as I said, I have just launched a Patreon page, so I would be really, really, really happy uh, if, if someone would perhaps uh, consider supporting me over there. I completely understand if you are not able to do so or if you simply do not wish to do so, that is completely fine. I also value just uh, your time when you are looking at the videos. I know that there are so many other things you could spend your time on, so just that you are supporting the channel by watching, perhaps leaving a like or a comment, that also means the world to me, so no pressure at all. Um, so far there are no real sort of benefits to supporting me on Patreon. Um, I haven't really come up with ways of showing my appreciation uh, yet. I'm considering if, um, if it has, uh, at some point it becomes sort of financially viable, I would like to do giveaways, like send out some painted models and stuff. Um, but that will have to wait a little bit, I guess. Uh, so if you have any ideas or suggestions or something for stuff you would like to see on a, uh, uh, for uh, people who support on Patreon, I would be more than happy for you to uh, let me know. I would think that was uh, very kind of you. So uh, yeah, uh, and as always, of course, uh, remember you can also follow me as Dyson Demons on Twitter and Instagram if you want to stay up to date on my painting projects. So uh, let me know what you think of this uh, video, of this uh, color scheme, and of course if you have any ideas or suggestions or stuff you'd like to see me paint in the future, uh, you are also more than welcome to let me know in the comments. So thank you so much for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye!